Hello everyone, Chaos here and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. Today, my revamped 1 to 99 Hunter Guide. As the name implies, Hunter allows your character to catch an incredibly diverse roster of creatures, all of which have their own purpose in the game. You may use them as clothing, all the way up to wielding them as weapons of mass destruction. The skill is pretty straightforward and you won't be making too much profit until the late levels. Because oddly enough, it's much more efficient to free set creatures or drop their yield early, as you move on to more useful methods. If this video is useful, remember to subscribe with notifications on, drop a fat like, and consider becoming a channel member by clicking the join button below for tons of benefits in the channel including instant access to our Discord. These are all the quests that provide Hunter experience as of the time of making this video. Remember that some of them have a hunter level requirement and you may not be able to do them right away. Hunter is not as fast as some of the previous skills we have covered so far, and sadly enough experience from questing is not enticing to work towards a few specific ones for experience. On the other hand, some of the following quests give decent experience, but the level requirement you need for them will make the reward not as significant, but they are needed to train the skill more efficiently. A Bone Voyage will open up Fossil Island, and here's where you will be able to train with birdhouses, the herbivore, and the drift net fish. All of these are absolutely amazing, and it's a pretty easy quest you should complete as soon as you can. There's a quest called the Eagle's Peak, which lore-wise will teach you how to use box trap for specific creatures. Fun fact, this was added in 2018, so bots wouldn't be able to catch a Chinchampas, since previously you didn't even need the quest for boxes. Priest and Peril is needed to access the entire swamp area of Mauritania. We are going to catch Swamp Lizard here for a little bit of experience for the early levels, but realistically, another quest you should do ASAP to open the map. The final quest we need for a specific training method is Monkey Madness 2. After this adventure, you will be able to train at Maniacal Monkeys, which is a fairly decent way to train the skill AFK, but more about it later. The only suggestion that isn't a quest is completing the Hard Western Diary. This will grant access to a somewhat more private hunter area for Dredge and Chompas, and will surely increase experience per hour because of the spawns. When it comes to items, we pretty much need a specific tool or a group of tools to catch every single creature. To avoid mentioning every single one, keep an eye out for the required items on each of the methods on your way to 99. And speaking of tools, this would be a good time to mention that there's a limit to how many traps you can set up at once, and it goes up according to your hunter level. In the wilderness, you can lay one more trap above the limit level for more catches. This is one of the few skills for which I would recommend using a hunter potion. These are fairly cheap, and you can use them in order to catch higher level creatures for more experience, and of course reach your next milestone much faster. Now, because we don't have any more useful items, I will close this one out with a fun fact. We have hunter clothing coming from Spindle Rupias, Horn Grahak, and Sabertooth Kayat. They might look like they help you in some way, at least to help you catch said creature with pitfall traps. But due to a bug that has been in the game since the skill first release, these outfits are purely cosmetic and Hunter has yet to see a scaling outfit that actually works. For plugins we have a few more than some of the previous videos, starting with one simply called Hunter. This will show you the state of your traps and will color code them if they're active, if they succeed or if they fail. I haven't mentioned a plugin called the Time Tracker Reminder since the farming video, and we can also use this one to remind us when our birdhouses are ready. This will notify us when it's time for your passive hunter experience with a screen flash. A method we mentioned during the fishing guide is Drift Net Fishing. We have a plugin specifically for set activity conveniently called Driftnet. This is not my cup of tea, but it offers significant experience per hour both for fishing and hunter. One of the most fun methods also has a plugin named after the activity itself, and it is the Herbivore. This will track the creature all throughout the mushroom meadow in Fossil Island, and you won't need to waste clicks while hunting it. Lastly, I recommend NPC Indicator so you can shift or right-click some of the creatures we will be catching for you to see them highlighted on the screen. This is especially useful for butterflies and the black salamanders. Alright hunters, the only thing we will do for early game experience is going to the Varrock Museum and heading downstairs. Talk to Orlando Smith and answer all of the questions for each of the creature exhibits, which will highlight the correct options on Runelight. Once done, talk to him again, and you will gain 1000 Hunter and Slayer experience, which will take you from levels 1 to 9, so you can skip some of the painful early game. The very first method I will showcase is something we can do from levels 9 all the way to 99, and it is the iconic Birdhouse Run. Before I explain how to do this, let's see how to access them a lot quicker. Get some ruby necklaces and use a level 3 enchant on them and to turn them into dig side pendants. To do this, you will need to find a clean necklace at the Varrock Museum tables with a rate of 1 in 51. Show it to the archaeologist to be able to make dig side pendants. Once you have one, follow the path you see on screen which will take you up a building in Fossil Island and use your dig side pendant here in order for it to teleport you to the specific location. 
Once you do, go around the island to click on four of these mushrooms, which will act as transportation across the different sections. The two important ones are the Verdant Valley and the Mushroom Meadow. Once this is done, grab logs according to your hunter and the crafting level, a hammer, a chisel, and low-level seeds to put in the birdhouse itself. I personally always use hammerstone seeds. If this is your first time doing this, you will also need clockwork mechanisms, which you can buy at the Grand Exchange. Teleport to the Fossil Island with your Digside Pendant, and click on the nearby mushroom to go to the Verdant Valley. Use your hammer or chisel on the logs, and you will make a birdhouse to then set on these spots. After that, simply use the seats on the birdhouse and just wait. The next time you do this, you're not gonna need the clockwork mechanism. Return to the mushroom, and this time go to the mushroom meadow. Go north for the third birdhouse, and then run all the way south for the fourth and final one. The effective experience per hour is pretty juicy for all tiers of the birdhouse, but since you can only do them every hour, it's not going to feel super fast. Regardless, a great way to passively train the skill if you're not a fan of the methods we will talk about next. The next one is incredibly simple. Grab a bird snare and go to the Piscatoris Hunter area, set it near the orange birds called the Copper Longtails, and to wait for them to trigger the trap. You will be doing this from levels 9 to 15, which doesn't sound like a lot, but, to be honest, it's pretty slow. You can take a butterfly net and butterfly jars with you, and you will now catch butterflies called the Ruby Harvest, which are also located in the Piscatoris Hunter area. Simply click on the butterflies, and when all of your jars are full, empty them to catch more. You are now going to do this from levels 15 to 29, which is a lot faster and honestly more entertaining than catching birds. This is where it starts speeding up a little bit. And by going to Mauritania, you are now going to focus on swamp lizards from levels 29 to 43. Take small fishing nets and rope with you, and click on the small trees to set up the traps hoping for the lizards to fall. When you catch them, simply shift click to release them, and because they're really worth nothing. This offers anywhere between 18 and 25,000 experience per hour, and remember that you can set 3 traps instead of 2 at level 40. Level 43 makes things even faster, and we are going to go back to the Piscatoris Hunter area, to this spot called the Falconry Pit. Take some GP with you to rent a bird, and with no weapons or gloves equipped, grab a falcon to start catching spotted cabins. Your falcon will aim for the creature, and if it fails, it will simply return to you. If it succeeds, click on the bird and you will now have some items in your inventory, which you can drop. At level 57, you can also catch Dark Kebets, which will boost your gains. Depending on where they spawn, you can expect between 40 and 65k XP per hour, and slightly more once Dark Kebets are unlocked. You're gonna do this until level 59. This is where we can start catching Red Salamanders, which is the same concept as Swamp Lizards. Once again, grab small fishing nets and rope, and head east or south of the entrance of the ZMI Altar. Click on the little branches to set up your trap and wait for the salamanders to trigger them. Remember that at level 60 you can place 4 traps instead of 3, and you can expect between 65 and 75k experience per hour, which is incredible for now. So you should do this until level 67. Boys and girls, bank your spades because we are now going to the wilderness to catch black salamanders from levels 67 to 80. Take the same tools as before, remembering that you can set 5 traps here because of the wilderness bonus to traps. I recommend tagging all of the black salamanders to see them more clearly, and just like before, simply set up your traps and release the salamanders when you catch them. For this final method before the grand finale, you can see experience rates between 80 and 100k per hour, as long as you don't get PK. The first endgame method we will talk about is catching red chinchampas. You may catch them in the Feldup Hunter area, or northeast of Prifinus. But my favorite spot is the hunting ground, which is a more private area to hunt them after completion of the hard western diary. Take a box traps with you, and simply set them up hoping for the little rats to fall for it. This is the first time where we are actually keeping the creatures we catch, because chinchampas are stackable. Just let your character set the trap once again, and continue catching. You can see experience rates from 80 to 100k per hour, and around 400k GP in that same time. This method also yields the hunting pet, a little chinchampa following you around. The second method is catching the herbivore in Fossil Island. For this, I recommend the Full Graceful, the Magic Secators, an Herb Sack, Stamina Potions, and if you have some extra cash laying around, the Ring of Endurance will make things much better. Remember that to earn more profit, higher Herb Lore levels are needed for you to get higher tier herbs from the creature. Go to the Mushroom Meadow in Fossil Island, and click on any highlighted box in order to start hunting for an Herbivore. With the plugin active, simply follow the white tiles, and click on any of the spots at the end of the trail. You will do this a few times before coming to the last spot, and if you're successful, the herbivore will be stunned so you can click on it and harvest it. There's a small chance you won't be able to catch it, leading to a message in your chat box saying that the herbivore trolled you instead. After that, repeat the process until your target goal. 
you can expect between 100 and 130k XP per hour, and profit will depend on your herb lore level. And remember, you also have a whopping 1 in 6,500 chance of getting the Herbivore pet every time you successfully hunt one. The alternative methods are not that eventful, and we are going to start with aerial fishing. This is like falconry, but the only difference is that it will happen in the water. Go to the spot in Zaya with a knife, and talk to the guy near the hut to rent the bird. Take a few worms to reward the bird, and then click on the highlighted icons on the water to catch the fish. Use a knife on whatever you catch to turn them into more food for the bird, and repeat until your target level. As it's obvious, this is going to give you some fishing experience as well. Another hybrid training method I'm not a huge fan of is drift net fishing. Oddly enough, this provides more hunter experience than fishing, but it's way too click intensive in my opinion. For a more detailed explanation of this method, click the link in the description below to go to the segment during my fishing video, because otherwise I would be copy pasting that entire part. After Monkey Madness 2, you can catch maniacal monkeys. Grab your crook monkey Grigri, and the bones to bananas either in spell or tablet form. Go to the cave northwest of Apatol, and once downstairs, go north. Click on the monkey bars to eventually land on this area where you will need to mount a demonic gorilla. After this, simply click on one of the big rocks to set up a trap with a banana, and wait for the maniacal monkeys to fall for it. Each will yield 1000 experience, but they take much much longer to trigger the trap. Unless you get a monkey tail, which is 1 in 5000, you won't be making any profit here, but rather, it is one of the best AFK hunter training methods in the game, not counting birdhouses. The very last method we will look at is hunting black chinchampas in the wilderness. Take 6 box traps, ideally a royal seed pod, and anything you are willing to lose in case you get PK'd. Because it can happen at any moment, I would recommend banking your chins every now and then, which will cut an experience and profit a little bit. But you're not gonna lose your spoils to a sweaty PK'er. Ideally, you can get up to 200,000 experience per hour, but that's being extremely generous and not taking any banking into account. So you can expect a little bit lower, and I wish you the best of luck. Okay, scapers, we now come to the most important part of the video, the best ways to achieve level 99. As always, I will have a few options for you. The way I got level 99 is just like following the guide. Hunter is super diverse, so you're always going to be unlocking something new with more experience per hour. Make sure to mix in some birdhouse runs for even more experience every day, and as long as you make it to level 80, that's when the money is going to start coming in. Because of this, the profitable way to 99 looks exactly the same, but we will be catching black chinchampas instead since they are more expensive than the red ones. Remember that you will be getting rid of most of your loot on lower level creatures, so not really worth banking anything. For a more entertaining way to get to level 99 and the chances at a cool pet, simply swap to the herbivore. This will keep you more engaged and will also offer a decent profit per hour. The final way to do this will be AFK. And you can either stick to birdhouses from levels 9 to 99, or all the way until level 60 until you can do maniacal monkeys, as you keep up the birdhouse runs for even more passive experience. Ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much it for the Hunter Guide, thank you so much for coming and for making it this far. If you did, make sure to tell me how you would get level 99 Hunter, or if you already have it. I want to give a huge shout out to all my channel members, you boys and girls are absolutely amazing, and your support goes a long way to feed my starving family. If you want to be part of this list of legends, click the join button below to subscribe monetarily and receive a ton of benefits in the videos, in the live streams, and of course in the Discord. Stay tuned for the next video, and of course for the next 1 to 99 guide, where I will show you how to achieve mastery in the crafting skill. Have an amazing day, have an amazing week, and I will see you then. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Peace!